This time I got a sharp view cam. It's another camera that was in that box of cameras and pieces. Let's see whether this one will work and whether I can make it work. And, uh, well, what's wrong with it? Other than the fact that it's in pieces. So this is another piece of junk that was uh, given to me. All ripped apart by the last person who had their hands on it to get a tape out. This one's a sharp uh, view cam, but this one's a high eight. And this one here, I'm hoping I can resurrect this one. So let's just see first of all how to hook up a battery to this one. The battery goes in here. Oh, it's got a battery in it already. Interesting. But of course, the battery is not going to have any charge in it. It's a nickel metal hydrate battery too that this one used. I can clip onto the, the positive and negative terminals, I think, on this one. Oh, no problem. It's, uh, this one's 3.6 volts. It's a lower voltage. Well, that works. I wonder if this thing's going to work. Let's get a picture off the camera. I wonder if that's all that's wrong with this is that they that they lost the power supply. Wouldn't that be something? They lost the power supply and then ripped the camera apart to um, get the tape out. How do we eject the tape on this thing? I think they may have maybe parts bent in here. This bar looks like it might be bent. I think that normally was straight like that. Okay, got to figure out how to open this one up without the cover on it. Normally there's a little switch that gets activated on here somewhere when you when you open the cover. Like when this cover is closed and you, you do that to open it, it will... Um, Oh, there's a hinge missing on here too. There's a switch probably right down here that activates. To open it. Now this piece might... No, that's from... That's from that other camera. Pull that in the garbage. It'll be interesting to see if this will actually play a tape. And that the only thing that was wrong with this is someone lost the adapter. I'll find out pretty quick here. Let's see, i got to figure out how to turn this thing on. Uh, play. This battery is low. Give it a bit more juice. It's in uh, Spanish. The menu is in Spanish. Let's see if I can figure out how to get this thing into English. Hmm. I figured out this is the switch that Okay, the drum spins. Will it play? Ah, it plays. Interesting, okay, so as a playback machine, well, actually this one would record too. It's got audio video outputs, DC input on the side. I wonder if I have a jack that might fit that. I think the screw is the screw is pulled back to allow the pin to go in to allow the pin to be pushed back like this so that it can fit onto this side it 
so the pin could fit into here and then this piece could be pushed into place and the pin would lock into place and then the screw would hold it in place hold it in place but because it's broken here it's not going to hold it in place That's kind of how that is held in place, just like that. Now, obviously it won't close because I have no power. But if I put power to it, this should retract down. I should be able to close the, the cassette compartment up. It's not flicking the little switch here. Oh, there's a spring on this. I bet it's off. Let's observe what it does. I think the take-up spool's not turning. Push play. Whoops. Let's just see. Okay, the take-up spool's sticking. Now the tape is starting to spill, and then it's going to stop. So why is it sticking? Probably some sand or something. Let's just take a look and see why the take-up spool is sticking. Is there something stuck in the gear, like a tooth, like a grain of sand? That's usually what goes wrong. This is a grain of sand gets stuck in one of the teeth and it stops it from turning. We'll just close this down and let it think that there's a tape in place. Press play. As that take up spool did stop turning when it was in play. And I got the error that the tape was uh, cover the tape sensors. Hmm. There's lots of torque. Okay, well it stopped when the tape was in there, I wonder why. Let's try that again and see why it stopped. Definitely the reel stopped turning when it was in play. It might be a damaged guide that's, that's causing the tape to stick. Let's just take a closer, whoops, take a closer look. Okay, I see why it's doing it. It's, the reel is stopping because the uh, the cassette's not being held in the proper place. So 
so that will cause it to eat if we're not careful so let's just eject the tape So it's either the position of the, the spindle is out a bit or the cassette basket has been deformed, which is probably what's happened because someone forced a tape out of it and they've damaged the cassette basket. So it's not holding the tape down properly. And because of that, it's causing the reel to slip. It's turning and it stops. You see, if I push the tape in, if I push the tape down, it's fine. Put the tape up, it'll stick. Push the tape down, and it's fine. See if I hold it down, something just minutely bent. If I, if I hold the tape down like that, it's fine. If I let the tape up, it stops. So it's just a very, very slight twist or a slight, slight bow in the, uh, the tape mechanism, the basket itself, just the way it holds the tape in place, very close to making this thing work properly. Well, it work as well as it's going to work, let's just say. Um, the top cover is never going to fit on it because it's broken. The uh, plastic is broken on it. It really doesn't have much, doesn't have much value in the shape that it's in. Anyway, we know what's wrong with it. It's just a matter of figuring out how to go about getting this thing to seat properly. I think my tape spool is ever so slightly bowed in. I'm just going to give it a bit of a push. Try to bend that spool just ever so slightly out this way. See if it uh, works any better now. Just looked to be a little bit off. When I was looking at it, it didn't look to be quite straight, so let's see if it'll play now. Ah, okay. I do believe that I've solved this problem with this little player. There it is, it's playing the picture on the screen. I do believe I've solved the problem on this one for playback. So it was just the take up hub was bent a little bit and I just kind of give it a bit of a push over with my thumb, straightened it up a bit. It was hanging up. Every time I made one rotation, it was hanging up. I think I got this one working as well as I can expect to get it working. But it does have an input on the side, a DC jack. It's a small one though. And there is a speaker on here. I wonder why this doesn't give us sound. Hmm. Volume? 
Oh, it does. As you can see, this thing's playing. I'm sure if I put a blank tape in it and record it, it would record as well. So maybe we'll try that. So here's a, another tape. This is a blank tape. Well, one I can record on. We'll do a test recording and just see if this thing records. I bet it does. I bet it records just fine. Now the mechanism's working. We'll put it into camera mode. And there's our picture. And how do I record on this thing? Record, start, stop. I think that means it's... That's... Is it recording? I guess that means it's recording. Okay, so the neat thing about these cameras is well, it had this rotatable camera section. Zoom in. And zoom out. That's about the only good thing about these was the rotatable. I mean, they were kind of stupid looking, these things, you know, like, ah. What a joke. You couldn't you see them in the sun? You know, I, I would see people walking around like this, trying to look at their camera. Then they came out with aftermarket hoods that people would put on them and they'd have them, they'd hold them up to their eyes and they'd be walking around looking at their screen with this, with this, this uh, hood that went all the way around it and right up to their face. Because in the sun, you can't see this. It doesn't have a real viewfinder. Okay, so let's see if that plays back. Rewind. Looks like it's going to play. Okay. Play. Hmm. I don't hear any sound. Where's the microphone? Oh, is this the microphone? Maybe that was the microphone that I broke. <laughs> but yeah, that was the microphone that I cut off. Oops. Oops. That's the microphone. That's not a speaker. That's the microphone that was on top there. The speaker is over here. Well, that's kind of stupid. You would think that the microphone would be, you know, in the camera itself, but that was the microphone that was up there. Okay, well, I guess if I need to record sound, I'll have to reconnect that. But a unit like this realistically would never be used as a camera anyway. It would be just used for playing back recordings and it plays that's that was on the tape before and it plays I should plug this in and uh, make sure that it outputs video to the TV and yes it does so what I've got myself here is I've got myself another hi8 player that will work sound is coming out of the TV as well as you can hear. It's using the standard Sony cord. So it's using that stupid proprietary cord that Sony had with the yellow uh, the the yellow insulators to indicate that it's a different wiring. What's different about the Sony standard? is the way that the, the ground is connected. So on Sony, if you look at a conventional, conventional three conductor AV cord, you'll find that the ground on all three of them, they're all, all first of all, the grounds are all connected together, right? But the ground is that one right there and then you've got red is the next one and then white and then yellow is the the tip so red is ring two yellow or white is ring one and the yellow is tip and the ground is over here Sony on the other hand is completely different on Sony This is why these are special cords. On Sony, the ground is not this one. It's that one. 
it's ring two. The yellow is ring one. The white is tip. Um, where's the white? I think white's tip on this one. Red is the far one, and white is the the tip. Right. So white is tip. Yellow, which is video, is ring number one. Ground is ring number two, and the right audio channel is that furthest one back, which is the ground on the conventional wiring. So these sharp cameras, like Sony, require the special cable, which is hard to find, and it's identified because it's got it's got yellow between the rings and tip. Anyway, I'm done on this one. That's it. I'm going to throw this in a box. I'm going to hang on to this one just in case I need it as a player down the road because I won't get anything for it. I don't have a power supply for it. Although I could I could make a power supply up, but the fact that to get the tape out, I'm going to have to do that. It's uh, not something that I'd really be uh, able to sell to someone. And with this piece missing, there's a piece that, that hooks up on here. There's another catch that goes on here that, that actually hooks around there to pull that up. It's missing. That pulls that switch. So, because there's parts missing, I didn't see any additional parts in the box. So, because of that, I'm just going to hang on to this thing as a playback machine. Just leave it like that. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye.